Good evening, my honorable. My name is Reverend David Kayode, a former candidate for city council in Queens, New York. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first African to run for office in New York City and make it to the ballot last year. Yes. yes, my question is this. Since my honorable is the pioneer of how to do it right politically in Africa, and uh, in 1993, I can still remember very well, what you did, what you implemented, and what became uh, June 12 in Nigeria. And um, before our dark power of military and not the election. But this year again, part of what you started emerged in the Kitty State where I came from. They used that modality. It came out right. A fire or she and fire me. They run against each other. But due to what you started, open ballot, I witnessed it from beginning to the end. I would like to know what they do wrong that makes some people to start to criticize the mechanism that they use. Because I know, I watch it, I'm a politician, I'm a Democrat, and I'm a politician in New York City. So that means I must know what I watch and know what I do. So I want you, with your experience, please can you tell me what wrong with this election in a kitty state that some people, they are not agree with it, they still think there is rigging, which I know I witnessed no rigging. Please, which I would like to hear from you. So I can take it back to a kitty. I'm <clears throat> really happy that uh, I'm not talking theory, that what uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can uh, see that what we did in 1990, coming out of our heart, because what the then president told me, you are a political scientist, you studied at University of California, Berkeley, you have been a Nigerian, you witnessed what had been going wrong, 63, 64, 59, use your ingenuity and find remedy. No two democracies are exactly the same. Britain has a monarchy, constitutional monarchy there, but you don't talk of monarchy in the US. But all the democratic uh, system of government, that's what led us to think of what can work for Nigeria. To tell you the truth, my brother, you know, immediately after the election, you know Fayemi, Dr. Fayemi, an academician too, said he will return to class, that he congratulated the person who defeated him. The incumbent, and many people say, oh, changes are coming to Nigeria. So somebody can lose the election and then congratulate the winner and hand over peacefully. But you know, there are people behind the scene. Sometimes they are called leaders. They don't hold any, you know what I'm talking. There are leaders, national leader, this, woman leader, that leader, godfather, god this. Do you hear of national leader of Democratic Party in the United States? Have you heard of national leader of Republican Party in the United States? They may have some influences by donating money, you hear knock is giving this or that according to electoral rule and so on. But not individual, after election, political party meets, party chieftains say, what are you talking? You are not representing this party. You, we must go to tribunal. You must contest it. The election is rigged. It was part of what? So this same man, a uh, professor in the university started having doubt about himself. And I was following the Kitty situation until recently. I was even the process of handing over power. You know they appointed the transition committee for Fire to take over. 
uh, uh, the representative of Fire Me were not attending the meeting, and so on. So that unnecessary factors intruded that could lead to violence. That's why electoral reform is very, very important. Because if it's not well handled, it leads to violence. There would have been violence. And that one led to violence in 1983. That, that's why Buhari military regime, when the military know that the uh, segment of civilians are not happy, they will jump and take over government. And may be organized government on their own interest, rather than on interests of the general public. I don't think coming out of heart of heart of fire fire that he was really not in support the congratulation he extended to fire 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 uh, fire fire set. What really happened is that people intruded, people tried to uh, leader and all those people I dealt with them, almost all the people in the political scene in Nigeria, one way or the other, were some of my clients, either during, uh, you know, there was political clearance in those days. Anyone who contested the election in Nigeria, from councillorship to uh, presidency, had to have clearance from me. It wasn't abused. People would have made money out of it in Nigeria. But the kind of reform we did, you must follow the law. And that's what uh, we have in a system. A system of laws, not wishes of men. If we have system of laws, oh, yeah. system of laws. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay, no problem. It's the long time I left you uh, teaching. You know. So, system where uh, uh, people respect the law. The rules, this will not happen. But there, will, there is still face-to-face -face administration. So nothing wrong with the election. No, no, to me, to me, as an electoral empire. What me? Yes. From what happened? You have another question in 12 election that uh, you umpired. And you are making the declaration for the first time that I'm hearing that Abiola won the election. I have made it in my book. Yes. This book but is when here. Abiola was arrested, jailed, you were nowhere to be found. You, the last statement you made was that the election was inconclusive before you disappeared, before you came out and wrote that your book. Wouldn't you have done Nigeria a great job of courage if you are stuck by the position that Abiola won the election and on that basis disgraced people like Babangida and the other people that you don't want to mention who made it impossible for Nigeria to have democracy for almost 10 years after that. Prof, don't you think you disappointed your nation? Just a minute, sir. Yeah. Can, can we have a, a couple of questions so it doesn't get so polarized? Okay. I think it's, it's a very important yeah, I, it is. I, don't to want to clear, I need to clear my name. You yes. said, uh, right. mostly, as a reformer, reform right. you got uh, a chicken that when it matters but more. Let's try not to but I, I didn't chicken out. The point, please listen and carry my message back to Nigeria. Carry, and I had never hesitated, and I will give you an interview. You say you, re if you, if you can, after this lecture, I can give it here. You carry it back to Nigeria. Before I left Nigeria, I gave to IIT, I gave to this day, and they repeat the same thing. Sometimes people don't take in the correct answers. Without this man standing here, they wouldn't have been June 12th election. If I tell you what I did to make sure that that election took place, you be, it is in this book. Sometimes people don't read. People think of money, 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 money in Nigeria. People should not think of theory, things that will work and make our system stable and perform for our people. Let me tell you. First and foremost, the military was divided before June 12th election was conducted. It's a given fact. If you read forward to my book, Colonel Abubakar Omar, you will know, was, used to be governor of uh, Kaduna State. He resigned his commission. He believed firmly in Ab uh, Abiola. And he affirmed everything in, in this book. Please get a copy. 
you look at it, an annulment. Don't read any other thing. Go straight to annulment. What happened? Let me tell you, the military was divided. Abacha was friend of Baba Gidam, saying it publicly at international level. At some stage, Abacha wanted to have a stint as president of Nigeria. When Babangida wanted to be a hero, that he handed over a reform system that he will be remembered by posterity and the inter international community. Because observers, he allowed observers all over the world to witness the election. But the only thing which he owed to Abacha, there was a coup of April 1990, which Abacha helped to serve his neck. So Abacha wanted to rule. He didn't want the election to go ahead. Now it's in that book. What happened to make the election not to go ahead? Everything was done to condemn the emergence of Abiola as a legitimate candidate of Social Democratic Party. Everything was done. I supervise, my commission supervise the emergence of an Abiola in Jos. But I stood firmly that he emerged according to the rule. When this didn't work, there was a court ruling. Were you aware of that? Yes. June 10, 1993. I was president of the Latin Union in 1993. Okay, listen to me. June 10, 1993, in the night, a court gave decision that election should not go on on June 12th. That I, I am bound not to conduct the election. Meanwhile, all my colleagues, national commissioners, have gone into the field to supervise the election. What could I do? I was alone. What I did, I decided to attend when I learned that there was a meeting of the highest ruling organ, National Defense and Security Council in Asorok on June 11. The election was to take place June 12. I wasn't invited. I just said that the meeting was going on. They didn't want pro abacha group, didn't want me there in the meeting. How would they hold meeting whether the election will take place or not? when the chief electoral officer of the country was not invited. In any case, when I heard of it, I took a risk and invited myself to a gathering of military people. Is it done in Nigeria? I don't know who will do it. I went to that meeting, and that's why without Babangida, the election wouldn't have taken place. What happened? In the meeting there, they asked me, why are you here? I said, I'm here because election will take place tomorrow. Court has given a decision that there should be no election. And this is not, cannot be, because election is tomorrow. Court cannot give a decision two days, uh, uh, just uh, one and a half days to election, that there will be no election. For, and they will observe us all over the world in Nigeria. And in any case, the law that empowered us to conduct the election had stated that once a date and time have been fixed for general election in Nigeria, no court can stop us. But after the election, if the election was not held according, in keeping with the law, it could be nullified. So that was position of law. I quoted to the president and his colleagues that the election must take place, and I'm ready. Unless you don't want the election to go on, tell me, then I know what to tell Nigeria. They are looking upon me, and they know about the rules of the election. And you have assured me you give me a free hand. Are you getting the message? You see, because I don't have time to conclude on, you said you give me a free hand. Election should hold tomorrow. If you don't want it to hold, Tell me what I will tell Nigerians. Abacha stood up. He was to go. There was something they passed around in that meeting. 
something which the Director of Information from U.S. Embassy circulated that if that election was postponed, it would be unacceptable to the United States. Because the United States was not aware of what was going on. So Abacha and group said, oh, postpone it for one week. Postpone it. Postpone it. America cannot dictate to us. And I raised my hand. The president, I'm telling you what happened. Those who didn't know about June 12th are talking. I ran. I uh, vanished. So the president said, have you any? I said, sir, this election must go ahead. This information, this relief from American embassy has nothing to do with election which we conduct tomorrow. It has nothing to do with that. And if we postpone it for one week, it will be the worst rigged election in Nigerian history. We will, you postpone it for three months, we will print another set of ballot papers, another set of arrangements. Everywhere was silent, it's in that book. So when he looked, there was, Shonika was there, he's still there. I'm mentioning them. The present president of Nigerian Senate was there, and the host of others. They said, okay, Babangida said, do you think Nigerians will come out tomorrow to vote? And that's where the military rules sometimes they can be decisive. Babangida alone took that decision, said, go ahead. Go and hold international press conference in their commission. Oh, 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 oh. This man was there, Olu, who was Secretary for Information. He should tell the, uh, the director to 48 hours to leave Nigeria. Uh, monitor should go uh, around and monitor the election, and that election should go ahead. That's why we thought Babangida as Let's, That's let's, what let's, can we try to have okay, okay. Can, can we, we try to have a more general that, yeah. debate because this is very important for Nigerian history very likely this debate but how much can the whole room learn most of us are not familiar enough with the situation and I, I would advise that you continue uh, specifically Sorry, sir. Uh, Prof I bring good tidings from the permanent representative of Nigeria to the United Nations, Ambassador Joy Uche Ugu. My name is Kyle Ojo, I'm a minister of the mission. Prof, you said it all. The world is a stage where men and women are actors and actresses. We play our parts and the switching in history for all to read. Hence, you have documented this. For all who are not aware of what went on then, to be educated. You played your part, we are playing our part. Congratulations, sir. And I thank everybody who, you know, here today for being here. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you so much, sir. You wanted to speak. Yeah, uh, hello, Professor. My name is Hussein. I'm uh, from Ghana. Even though I'm kind of a fourth generation of Nigeria, genetically I'm, I'm a Nigerian by family. So I'm really concerned about what is going on. In order to actually uh, say my to direct my question to kind of uh, apply to the general audience, the issue that actually has really attracted international media has to do with the, the Boko Haram situation, which has actually uh, made uh, 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 Nigeria a bleeding and burning uh, state. Uh, just yesterday, I, I was actually reading leadership newspaper online. It says about, uh, so far, 189 89 days since those girls were captured. Even though I know you are not, you are not a direct uh, politician, but you are a kind of a custodian of politicians. So do you, do you think, don't you think that the political elite in Nigeria have hands in this particular situation regarding the, the bleeding and burning situation, bombardments here and there, as well as the girls that were captured over six months 
nowhere to be found. Can we do it? Don't, clearly, I want, do you, don't you think there's kind of, it's being stage managed by the political elites? This is what I want to know. Thank you. Thank you. No one, no one, including me, we like the surgency that is going on. Whether it's uh, Boko Haram, ISIS, kidnapping, anytime, anywhere. That's not order of the day. That will not lead to any... My sympathy goes to the kidnapped uh, uh, girl. The victims of circumstances they didn't create and they didn't know. I hope you understand me. Uh, I sympathize with them and I would want anything to be done to get their release. But you know, if force is applied, it may lead to their death. In my view, if any regime, because I believe Nigeria is strong enough to use its military might and they invade that forest. But how many will be alive at the end of the exercise? Uh, the uh, administration will be blamed. Many people will blame. And it requires delicate negotiation, I believe. And when the negotiation is going on, I'm sure you are following the internet and news from Nigeria. When even the chief of defense staff put in the internet, they were colonists, they were people within the army, trying to relate to people they are fighting against. It's not something hidden. If Chief of Nigerian Defense Staff could say that, that tells quite a story of the intricacies surrounding that abduction and its release, and especially you don't know the leaders, it's not just one person. Who supports those people? And they don't really care about people they kill, right and left. Muslim, Christian, they are like Western, that should not be Western. So there is much to it, and it requires, and that's why we are saying again, Center for Media and Peace Initiative. There is need for role by the press not to engage in sensational news in Nigeria. Sometimes they do engage. Okay, we have some more questions. Yeah. Let's move on. And, to okay. Questions. And so on. You know what I'm talking. So uh, it requires Nigerians working together as a nation. And when we don't work together as a nation, as institution, as a body, as nation state, and with national focus, national interest, our interest is tied together. We don't succeed. Don't you see how Nigeria succeeded with Ebola? They all work together, both the federal government, legal state government, irrespective of party, the minister, the governors, and Ebola, the public contact tracing all over, and the Ebola was checked. And Nigeria was declared yesterday to be Ebola free. Is it not something good that should enlighten the heart of Nigerians everywhere. But because that thing has spread to over 160 million, well, I, I think the United States would have closed the border to Nigeria. Professor, let's take one more question. Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Jeffrey. Jeffrey so has very we students that actually major in engineering science actually help to participate in the political field of the economy right here? Yeah, how, can, um, like how can we engineering students actually participate in the, in, the, in the political field in our economy right here? You know, Politics 
is not necessarily for political scientists. Please take, take it. Politics, listen to me, is not necessarily for political scientists. You may be a political scientist, but you may not be a good professional politician. A politician must be able to relate with the people, must have flair to interact, to mix, to have ideas. And these things are not limited to, to social scientists, sociologists, to those who study law. Those who study mathematics can also study the engineering, may have flair, especially if you, if you are concerned with condition of people in Africa and you have a sense of mission, that you have a role to help improve the situation. The background you studied may even be an asset. Remember the minister in Lagos uh, who studied mathematics, but is called to ministry. So God can use any of us, divert our talents in any direction he wants. So you can, if you have a flair, and this is why they said that in prison. Why we interact? You may develop a feeling. And urge you want to make a contribution in an area. And you can certainly. But it starts with getting interested in human being, in human affairs, in community service. Even the president of this nation, after he studied law, he was interested in community service in Chicago and so on. From there. He went to uh, the house, state uh, senate in uh, Luna. From there, up, up, up. So uh, it could happen to you. You can be, that's why they said you are the leaders of tomorrow. It starts as young as you are, having a flair, having a concern, community service, contributing, writing, advising. So it is possible. Thank you so much. There's two more questions. 